simplify the explanation of functioning the firing cycle is divided into three phases first the backward movement of recoiling parts the cartridge having been fired the pressure from the explosion is carried through the forward end of the bolt to the lock and through the lock to the locking surfaces of the receiver the powder used is fast burning so that the highest chamber pressure is almost instantaneous the lock is made of bronze and the bolt and receiver are made of steel That is why the high chamber pressure causes the lock to cling to the locking surface on the receiver, locking the bolt in its forward position until the pressure subsides. In this cutaway section of the gun, you can see that as soon as the high chamber pressure has subsided, the lock moves upward, clears the locking surfaces in the receiver, and the bolt can move to the rear. The angle of the lock is such that the moment the lock is moved to clear the receiver locking surfaces, there is only sufficient powder pressure in the chamber to force the bolt back and eject the empty case. It also compresses the recoil spring, which thus stores up energy for the forward movement. As soon as the bolt moves back from the abutment on the underside of the receiver, the hammer is released. This permits the firing pin spring to force the firing pin to the rear, away from the face of the bolt. The empty cartridge is held on the face of the bolt by the extractor. After the bolt has traveled to the rear about two inches, the ejector, which protrudes in a groove on the left side, comes in contact with the base of the empty cartridge and throws it to the right through the ejector opening. The rear movement of the bolt expends nearly all the energy imparted by the chamber pressure so that the bolt does not strike heavily against the buffer. The buffer pad absorbs the remaining shock. On the underside of the bolt, there are two sear notches, so that if the bolt strikes the buffer pad, the rear sear notch will pass over the sear and allow it to engage in the front notch. If the bolt does not recoil far enough, the sear will engage in the second notch. However, if the bolt moves to the rear far enough to eject the empty cartridge case, the bolt will usually be back far enough to engage the sear with the front notch. The second phase of functioning consists of the forward movement of recoiling parts. When the trigger is pulled, the bolt moves forward under the action of the recoil spring, carrying the lock and actuator with it. After the bolt moves about an inch, the forward end touches the back of a cartridge and pushes it forward until the nose of the bullet comes in contact with the bullet ramp in front of the receiver. The cartridge is guided into the chamber by the bullet ramp and the lips of the magazine. When the cartridge has been seated in the chamber, the extractor snaps around the rim of the cartridge. Just before the bolt reaches its forward position, the lock is cammed down into the locking grooves so that the bolt is completely locked as the hammer strikes the receiver. The hammer being of triangular shape, the lower point strikes the receiver, causing the hammer to pivot around the hammer pin and strike the head of the firing pin with the upper point, thereby firing the cartridge. The rectangular surface of the bolt, striking the abutment of the receiver, stops the forward movement. 
As the upper point of the hammer comes in contact with the abutment, it pushes the firing pin forward into the cartridge. The action of the trigger mechanism represents the third phase of functioning. When the trigger is pulled, the trigger rotates around the trigger pivot and lifts the disconnector up under the sear lever. The sear lever lifts the front end of the sear. This causes the sear to rotate around the sear pivot. In so doing, the nose of the sear is depressed, disengaging it from the sear notch on the underside of the bolt and allowing the bolt to go forward. For semi-automatic fire, the rocker pivot is set at single. As the bolt goes forward, the point of the rocker is in the T-groove on the underside of the bolt. When the point of the rocker strikes the rear end of the T-groove, the rocker is forced forward. The rounded part of the rocker comes in contact with the disconnector and forces the disconnector out from under the sear lever. The disconnector is disengaged from the sear lever as the bolt travels forward. When the bolt reaches its forward position, the sear spring and sear lever spring force the sear upward to engage the sear notch on the bolt. For full automatic fire, the rocker pivot is set at full auto. The rocker pivot is of eccentric design, so that when the rocker pivot is set at full auto, the rocker is lowered enough to allow the bolt to move forward without striking the point of the rocker. Therefore, the sear remains in its lowered position as long as the trigger is depressed. When the safety is set at the firing position, it is turned toward the front, and the flat milled surface on the safety pivot is in such a position that the sear is allowed to rotate around the sear pivot. When the safety is turned toward the rear or safe position, the round part of the safety engages in a groove on the rear of the sear and locks the sear in its uppermost position. Thus the safety can be turned only when the bolt is to the rear. The magazine catch rotates around its pin and is held down in the engaged position by the magazine catch spring. The stud on the magazine catch is to hold the box type magazine. The drum type magazine is held by the rectangular catch on the left side. The trip functions only when the box type magazine is used. Its purpose is to hold the bolt open when the magazine has been emptied. As the magazine empties, a fin on the back of the magazine follower rises up. As it comes under the trip, it causes the trip to rotate around the trigger pin. This in turn disengages the disconnector from the sear lever 
allowing the rear end of the sear to rise up and engage the notch on the underside of the bolt. Thus, the bolt is held open automatically when the last round is fired out of a box-type magazine.